Hi, welcome. So today we're going to use games to determine Rama intensities. And so our target molecule today would be using a carbon tetrachlorine. And so we're going to use McMole plot in here. And the, the reason we're using McMole plot is that this will help us build that molecule and that will be compatible with games. So we start off with using carbon and we're going to set that for the builder tools. And the next thing we do is we add hydrogens so that we get the optimal length. Now it doesn't really matter that we're changing the hydrogen to a chlorine because we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to optimize the bond lengths before we even proceed to do the Rama intensities. And so now we're gonna do the in, the in the input builder. And so we run this as an optimization. And remember this basis set is what controls um, the actual molecule itself and how do we determine its actual uh, bond length. And so it's gonna be 6.3 and that's the one we're gonna use. And so everything else will stay the same. And if you do it right, uh, once we write the file and, and put it into games, it'll be correct. And so we're just changing the name to carbon tetra, uh, carbon uh, tetrachlorine, sorry. And remember this has to be an underscore because games will not read it if, it's an, if it has a space in between. And so now we're going to open games. And it's very simple. We just drag it in. And since my Mac only has two processors, we're going to select two processors. And this will help speed up the process itself. So this will take a while. It depends on your computer, how fast it is and how new it is. Sometimes it'll take longer, sometimes it'll be faster. And so we're going to find the actual completion in the game's SSQD file. And what we look for in the log file is that it terminate normally. This means that they actually did a good job. And so now we're going to do the Hessian. And so this is the requirement in order for it. We have to do the optimization first. And see that the bond lengths have changed. This is the optimal bond length that we need. And this is the reason we opened it in the log file. And so now we're going to run this in the Hessian. And the thing we're going to change is going to be using a DFT. Same thing, same basis set, same data. You can change the name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name just so when I look at the log, I know what I'm, what is this for. And the DFT is just going to be on the build set. And this build set is just a very generic one. This is the newest one that we're using. It's compatible with games. After that, everything else, we can just write the file again. And this time, we're going to put the underscore Hessian in behind it just so we keep it so we know which file we're using when we do the actual games rendering. Okay, we're going to save it, press OK, going to close the log file, we don't need it anymore. And now, what we're going to do is drag it in, same thing, two processors. So, this is actually going to take a little longer just because we're going to look for the actual rotational energies in tetracarbon and tetrachlorine. Again, it's going to be based on your individual computer and see how fast it is, how many cores you have. So, so the reason we do the head scene is because this is a prerequisite before we can do the Rama intensities. And so we're going to check the log file to make sure that the finish correctly. See, it says terminate normally. That's what we're looking for. And so now we're ready to do Rama intensities. And so we, this is the prerequisite. So we go to the data file itself of the actual Hessian file. And what we do first actually is uh, we do the input builder. I'm going to run this as a Rama intensities and everything else will remain the same and what we can do is again for formality we're just going to change the name to Rama 
and we're going to write the file. Again, remember that everything has to be written in underscore if there's a space between it, otherwise games will not interpret it correctly and you'll receive an error. Okay, so with this, we're not ready to run it just yet. And so we're going to go and actually open this file in the text editor. Okay, and then we're going to go to the actual games file itself. And we're going to open that data file that we did for the Hessian. The Hessian is going to have, uh, it's going to have a grad file and that's going to be the determining factor for us when we actually run into games. Otherwise, they won't find it. And so we're going to copy from the dollar sign grad all the way down. And that's what we're going to need. This is a, when we do our raw my intensities. We're going to copy it over. I'm going to paste it at the end of the page. Save it. And then we can close the actual data file. Just making sure we're not missing anything. And now we can actually drag in the Rama itself into the games. This step is actually won't take as long as the Hessian because the Hessian does most of the heavy lifting for the Rama. And now we're just going to be looking for where it's Rama active. Hessian itself does the IR itself and the vibrational. That's the reason it takes so long. All right, we're done with the actual compiling itself now. And so now what we would do is we will go to games itself and further again, go to the SSQD file. And we're gonna open the log file. And we're gonna check again that it's terminated normally. Now we're gonna go all the way up, we're gonna up a little, and here is all your Rama intensities for that molecule as per, for its frequency and shows you which are Raman active and which are not. Thank you for watching.